Hi there, I'm Nancy from Black Sheep Knitting in Needham, Massachusetts. I'm sitting here in my yarn shop called Black Sheep Knitting, and we this is our weekly podcast. And I want to thank, take an opportunity to thank those of you who have subscribed. We are getting new subscribers all the time. I also want to thank all all of you who participated in our online sale last weekend. It was very successful. Some people had trouble with the code, I know, and we tried to correct it and some people still were unable to do it. So when we do another sale like this, we're going to make instructions really clear um, and we'll hope that that works um, for people. So we're still uh, shipping orders. We had quite a few and there were couple cases where we um, didn't have our inventory was off so we've had to order more yarn but I wanted to thank you for that um, what I'm wearing today I did not knit this sweater um, but the the shawl I'm wearing is called Jody from uh, Hohe Locatelli it's a fingering weight and I think she designed it for Jody Miller um, from Grocery Girls, um, and it's just a yummy, fun, easy, easy sweater. I think that what I used, this, the solid color is the um, Juniper Moon Harriet Fine, and it's so soft. And then this is just a um, fingering weight variegated that I had in my stash, I think, or it might have been could have been something we had here in the shop. I can't remember, but it's a two color um, and it's a, it was a fun, fun knit. Uh, I wanted to do a couple announcements. Um, a reminder that April 27th is local yarn shop day. And Casapinka has decide, designed a cowl for that and you can get the pattern. We'll have codes here to get the pattern if you purchase the yarn from the shop. So we'll put some combinations together for that. I think maybe we'll make kits. Uh, we'll see. And we're also going to have a sample sale on that day. And I'm going to be, I'm stash busting or I'm trying to reduce my stash. So I'm going to have a lot of yarns from my stash that I haven't used and they're going to be on sale for pretty deep discounts. So that'll be fun. And who knows, we may come up with some other pri you know, surprises for that day. We all, I also wanted to remind you about the um, embroidery on knits. And I'm going to show you some samples. That workshop is May 11th and the 25th. I believe it's a Saturday from 10 to 12. And the um, Embroidering on knitting, I've done embroidery, regular embroidery. Um, it's a little bit different, but it's fun. And we're going to, um, you're also going to learn duplicate stitch and visible mending. So if you have moth-eaten sweaters or sweaters that a dog chewed, we have a solution for that. The other big announcement is that um, we're having a trunk show of Miss Babs yarns. So we'll, for one week, we'll have, um, I think we're going to have three or f three or f maybe four different yarns from Miss Babs. So if you're a Miss Babs fan, come to the shop. We'll have um, her yarn here for sale for that week. And it's, I believe, May 17th to the 26th. So we'll announce that again, just so that you don't miss out. You'll want to come and check it out. Um, if somebody's just arrived to work. It's Agnes. Um, it's Agnes. Agnes, here. come here. What get sweater do you have here. on? Agnes has on a beautiful <laughs> sweater. We'll have to show you. Oh, yes, her drawing sweater <laughs> that she finished. Can Isn't it Hello, gorgeous? <laughs> and Agnes is just happy, 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 spring. Really happy, Agnes. happy spring. Isn't it beautiful? Yeah, gorgeous. Oh, so beautiful. Thank you, Agnes. Thank you. Um, so I wanted to show you a few new, something new in the shop. We have a new sample. 
And the sweater is called the Salty Air Tea. And isn't that beautiful? And it has such just gorgeous drape. It's lovely, lovely, lovely. And I want to show you what it's made in. Um, this, I forget, this is, I forget the name of this, but the um, yarn is called Soft Lino from Lane de Nord. And it, it comes in this color, which is a teal. And um, this is a white. And this one is called Rose. And also, you know, navy. Um, in the navy. So this is a great um, summer tea with um, a little bit of interest in the um, lace work on it. And I just, I like the drape and I think, oh and I should tell you what it, what's in it. It is 80% linen and 20% Pima cotton. So this is a very good summer um, top. Again it's called Salty Air Tea. So I recommend that for your summer knitting. Wanted to show you some new colors that we got in in um, Lena. This one's called Twilight, and this is a beautiful sort of dusty purple violet kind of color. And Lena, I just love this yarn. It wears really well, and it's this one is cotton, viscose, and linen. Another cotton linen combination. And then this crazy one, and I had a bet with somebody in the shop that this might not go as quickly as I think. But if you, oh, what if you did a stripe in those two? Robin is groaning. But see, that's, some cra that's a crazy thing I might do. Um, but this is a true neon orange. It might be nice as a nice small stripe in something. Or a child sweater. A child or sweater or something. Anyway, it's a little wild. Um, and then we got some new colors in Double Sunday. We got a big shipment of that. And if you haven't knit with this yarn, you really should. It's a beautiful, beautiful wool. It is a non-super wash, I believe. And it is, it's 100% merino. It comes in 108 meters. Um, skein. Anyway, this is a, a new colorway for us called turquoise. And we have, I think this is night sky. This is a kind of gray, purpley gray. I don't know. Kind it's of fun. This is too. a good, these yarns are really, really nice for um, uh, color work. We did the Celeste, the Petite Knit Celeste um, sweater in it and um, this color is called light lilac this is gorgeous I think and then we got a really nice red this is called scarlet red and it's kind of an orangey red but really pretty if you're a red fan so anyway those are some new things in the shop we're going to be getting in a new shipment of dyed in the wool and a shipment of dream state um, hopefully next week I wanted, so I mentioned to you about the um, embroidering on knit class. So I wanted to show you, I have a bunch of little samples that I did. This is a mes method of visible knitting. So if you have, it's a woven stitch. And um, you can see I've used some different yarns. And interestingly enough, this is a, the pink in here is a, the dark pink is a silk, has silk in it. And these are the two same colors, same yarns, excuse me. And this is the silk with um, this yarn, this cashmere, it's a cashmere yarn. And the two like yarns that I use for the embroidery do much better than sort of mixing them up, but you'll figure that out. So this you would use um, to uh, repair moth-eaten or um, sweaters that you have um, holes in. And you can do huge areas. It's really fun to do. So this is a solution for your moth-eaten or um, holy sweaters. This is just a sampler I did of 
different patterns and different, this is a little dragonfly that I tried to make and some, you can do interesting graphic kinds of things. You can do um, straight lines with stitches. These are um, French knots and then just some other play things I was playing around with. I have done some with flowers, so you can do if you want to jazz up a sweater that is kind of plain or worn or something, you can do some flowers. These are some duplicate stitch. We're going to do duplicate stitch. Um, these are just some samples of different ways of doing duplicate stitch. If you want to put um, words or letters on your objects, this is what you would do. This is another one with flowers. So if you wanted to put flowers across um, the top of a sweater, around the bottom, um, this is another just a simple, simple flower. And then um, these are some more just fun stitches. So these are fun to do. You could do around necklines or around, um, you could do a whole lot of um, things around borders. Oops, we have to answer the door. Sorry for the interruption. We had a UPS delivery, and um, it's, of course, another box of yarn. Um, back to embroidering on knitting. You can do lots of wonderful um, stitches around borders, around edges. Um, they're just, uh, the possibilities are absolutely endless and lots and lots of fun. So there's still some spaces, so sign up. Um, it'll be fun. Wanted to show you a little project that I was doing at one point and show you some of my favorite books. So I have this, um, these are Barbara Walker's Treasury of Knitting Patterns. And if you want to go to, you can find these in the library, you don't have to buy them, I don't think, but they are just, this was a second printing and it was printed originally in 1970, I believe. And Barbara Walker um, was a well-known um, designer. Uh, I don't know if she's around anymore, but this book is filled with designs to do. So if you want to, and this, um, these are mosaics. And you, I, you'll see in a minute that I use some of these. Um, but a lot of designers use these books to come up with, look at the cables in that, to use for designing their patterns. And if you talk to designers, they have, you know, big libraries full of these kinds of books. This one was, gosh, somebody was throwing this out, I think, and I think it's probably it were, well, it was a second, but this was one of her first, I think this might have been her first book. She's since done, there are two others, and this is her second treasury of patterns. And so they're very easy to adapt to things that you're, you might be designing or wanting to do. But if you're ever looking, <coughs> excuse me, for, um, patterns to do, like suppose you want to do a scarf and you can't find anything that you like, you can simply use one of these patterns. And then her third one, so even more, and I think they're all, and here she's got lots of charts. And I'm a chart fan. I think it's really, um, they're so easy to do once you, once you figure out, or get used to using them because you can always you can always see your mistakes if you make a mistake it's so much easier i'm just not a person who can read lines and lines and lines of patterns i just um like on her earlier ones they're all written out and i think if you're doing a lot of the same pattern over and over again reading um Reading line after line for me is dizzying. I just, I can't do it. So um, I appreciate that this, in her third book, um, she did include 
you know, she's got a chart of all the cables you can do. So you can make up all your, you know, all of your own. So what I had done, and I kind of abandoned the project, but I wanted to design an afghan. So these are some of the squares. Well, this hasn't been blocked, but I'll pull this out that you can see that I designed from using these books. Here's another one. This is a mosaic. And this one is just simply, um, and it, how did I do this that it ends up ribbing? These have, oh, I know, it, you know it's a um, color work. I was trying to remember why it is like that. So I use, and I've been using this pretty much the same three colors for this. So I just, you know, made up this pattern and did that. And this is another one. I love this pattern, this, these little cable, cables and then um, wrapped stitches. So this one was a lot of fun to do. And then finally, this one was a fun cable. This one has to get severely blocked. So um, if you like doing cables or if you want to design your own, if you want to put a pattern in a sweater or a scarf or a poncho or a wrap, um, I highly recommend these. There's also, um, I have it at home but didn't bring it, there's a, is it called the Japanese Bible or Bible of Japanese? Um, knit stitches. So they're um, another whole um, series of um, patterns to use to when you're designing. So and you don't have to be you don't have to be an expert. You can you know if you can count, you can figure out how to plug in and make a um, make a square or make a um, a scarf or a shawl something. So this is this kind of thing is a lot of fun, and maybe someday it will become a blanket. I hope so. Um, the difficult thing was I made this all in um, shepherd's wool, which we used to be able to get wholesale, but she stopped wholesaling. You can get it online. It's the softest, most beautiful wool you'll ever knit with. So luckily, I have a little bit of a stash of it at home. And finally. I wanted to read, I got a, somebody gave me this. Now I can't remember. It's called Knitting Eph Ephemera. Is that how you pronounce it? And I just picked out some cute little things to read to you that you might find amusing. Um, so this is called Sheepy Factoids. Sheep have good memories. Some, sci some scientists estimate that they can remember people or events for up to two years. Who knew? Yeah, I can't anymore. Um, President Woodrow Wilson, remember him from a long time ago, kept a flock of sheep at the White House after the U.S. entered World War I, allowing them to graze on the lawn as a simple symbol of support for the country's war efforts. The sheep's wool was sold to raise money for the war, and their grazing saved money on groundskeeping costs. Isn't that clever? Um, another little factoid is a single sheep can produce up to 30 pounds of wool per year. That's a lot of wool, depending on its breed and other factors. But the average sheep in America produces only 7.3 pounds of wool annually. Oh, didn't know that. Um, the Navajo name for sheep is Dibe, which means that by which we live. So I guess they use sheep a lot. And this, uh, when was this written? So I should just, in 2015. So there are estimated 1,000 plus brands of sheep in the world, and about 50 of those are found in the U.S. Didn't know that one. And then just thought I would read, oh, this one I thought was really fun. This book is filled with all kinds of stuff that is interesting. Um, runners who knit. I know Andrea Mowry knits while she walks. I know, I know that. But, you know, I would fall over and hurt myself, I think. But University of Missouri professor David Babcock 
set a new record on October 9, 2013, the long, for the longest knitted scarf while running a marathon. Babcock managed to create a six foot nine inch scarf as he ran, surpassing the prior record of five feet two inches held by Britain's Susie Hewer. <laughs> I, I don't. I, what I want to know is what did he do what with this? And it must have been a mess at the end because you sweat like crazy in That's a. Hilarious. It just. Um, and one last little thing, um, Angora. Angora is a type. Is it a type of rabbit or a breed of goat? Both, actually. The Angora is one of the oldest types of domestic rabbit traditionally bred for its long, downy coat. There are several breeds of Angora rabbits, such as French, Giant, and Satin Angora. Angora rabbits produce very silky and fine wool, finer than cashmere, which is harvested from the rabbit by shearing, combing, or plucking. I don't think any rabbits are hurt um, being um, when their coats are taken. Um, they can, let's see, depending on the precise breed, Angora rabbits can weigh up to 12 pounds or more. The name Angora comes from the Turkish town of Ankara, known as the, in the past as Angora. When you see yarn labeled as containing Angora, the manufacturer is re referred to, is referring to the super soft fur of Angora. So if you've felt or ever felt it, it's just soft and fluffy. Um, just to make things confusing, there are also a breed of goat called Angora that produces long, silky hair and is also named for the Turkish city of Angora, Ankara. Angora goats produce the fiber that we call mohair, a long, lustrous fiber with a hint of a halo. Mohair is sheared from the goats and often blended with other yarns or, and or brushed to emphasize a halo. Neither of the above, above should be Confused with the Angora cat, a breed, you've guessed it, a long silky fur. Thank you, I was confused. <laughs> silky fur and named for the Turkish city. It was the Angora cat rather than the goat or rabbit that was so loved by James Bond's villain, Ernest Stavro Blofeld. Don't know who he was. Um, the, I did, I was watching a video the other day of Miss Babs, who was talking to Melanie Berg, who's a, um, I believe, a German um, knitwear designer. She does mostly shawls. But uh, Miss Babs was talking about mohair, and she said that the old mohair that we used to get, you know, 20, 30 years ago, was made from the outer, more outer, more outer coat of the goat. And they've discovered that those are just too scratchy. People don't really like them. So really, the mohair that you're seeing now is from probably from baby goats and from the underbelly, not so much from the full-grown goats. So those are my little um, tidbits for you today, little factoids. Maybe we'll have more in a future episode. Um, remember that um, the Petite knit, Knits Knit Along is ending April 30th. So if you have a finished object to submit, go to our website. There are instructions there. If you can't figure that out, you can give us a call or you could stop into the shop um, and we could help you go through that. Um, but we hope that you'll try to do that from home. You can also just email us a picture you know, we'll we'll put your name in the in the mix. So we hope that people have finished. I know somebody who's excuse me finished two sweaters already, and was working on a third. But I don't know if I don't know if she'll get that one finished. Anyway, um, we thank everybody for participating. So many people were doing it, and we still have a group that comes in on Friday afternoons from 3 to 5. Everybody's welcome. You don't have to, um, you don't have to be working on the petite knit, knit along, but it's kind of a nice group that has formed over this um, project. We may have another knit along, knit along for the summer. We'll let you know about that. So like us and subscribe and 
happy knitting, get some yarn for some summer knitting. We have lots of cottons and linens, um, and we have, you know, this beautiful, we have these <laughs> gagging colors, but I, I would actually lots stripe, well. but we have lots of colors, <laughs> and I would stripe these because I like color, but we have lots of, this is linen and cotton, so we have lots of other choices. So I hope you have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>